Hey guys, it's History Behind the Warrior and welcome to yet another video. Now today, we're going to go off script a little bit for my typical content and talk about what I believe is coming next for NeverRealm Studios. The reason why I'm saying this is because we are coming around to Mortal Kombat 11's two-year anniversary, in turn making it the longest supported NRS game to date, having three DLC packs. So the big question on everyone's mind right now is what exactly is going on with NRS, what could we see this year, and honestly, what comes next for the studio. But before we do jump right into that, we do have a sponsor for today's video. And yeah, they got me again, you guys all know who it is. Now listen, everyone knows Raid Shadow Legends by now, but did you know it's Raid's second anniversary? It has been two years since Raid has burst onto the scene and completely taken over mobile gaming. Since then, Raid has only gotten bigger and better. Raid grows as a family and community day by day, and because of this, they have become the number one RPG in all of the US, with a huge fan base that grows by the millions each and every single day. So because of that, Raid wants to thank each and every single one of you for making it possible. From content creators to cosplayers to even just playing the game itself, the Raid family says a big thank you to everyone for their success. Now with that being said, what comes next for Raid Shadow Legends? How do we celebrate the two-year anniversary? Well, there is a six-week straight anniversary and tournament event, with shiny prizes sitting at the end of it. To truly test your own fortitude, Raid has also launched its first ever Clan v Clan tournament, giving players the chance and opportunity to see how strong they are in the struggle for ultimate clan dominance. And if that wasn't enough, they are also releasing the first champion in the Shadowkin faction. One thing I've always enjoyed about Raid, over character models and designs. It feels like there's a lot of character designs here that have been inspired by fighting game characters. Now, if you want to get a huge head start, all you got to do is hit the link down in the description below or scan my QR code right here. You'll get your free epic champion, Jotun, who is amazing for the Doom Tower, 100k silver, 50 gems, and three ancient shards. So you can summon awesome champions and dive right into the fray. All this treasure will be waiting for you right here so it is just that easy to get into raid so with that said i will catch you all there now sponsor aside what do i think comes next for neverrealm well first off let's talk about what could be on the horizon and explore some of the ideas on the cutting room floor for neverrealm's next big game. So, what do we officially know right now? Well, honestly, not too, too much. The only thing that we know for sure is that NeverRealm is indeed cooking up something, as one of the developers did tweet out that a new project was on the way, but we simply just don't know what that is. So, let's go through our options here, because there are actually a few, and I know there are some interests from the community that people have been asking for. Now, let's start off with the obvious. Mortal Kombat 11. We are really, really deep into Eleven's lifespan, a lot longer than dare I say anyone had honestly expected, as it does typically break Neverrealm's annual cycle, which is a new game every two years. But this could largely be because of the C virus last year, having postponed a lot of work in studios, making it very difficult for a game to come off the ground. But with that said, it did not stop Neverrealm from releasing Combat Pack 2, consisting of Melina, Rambo and Rain. Now this DLC pack did drop in the late quarter of last year, so there's actually been a lot of time since then, and 3 months since the last MK11 patch. So with that said, do I personally think that a combat pack 3 will be happening, and will they expand on the story once again? Well honestly, in my own humble opinion, I don't actually see much more support being thrown this game's way. I mean if we look at it as this, it has had 3 big DLC expansions, beating out previous NRS installments, and in turn has had a longer lifespan. If we look at the patch notes, they are very, very minor adjustments to what we get in terms of gameplay. These sort of patch notes are typically a sign that we are at the end of a game's lifespan. We saw this with Injustice 2, and we saw this with Mortal Kombat X. MKX had its big annual patch, where adjusted breakers, altered frame data, and made tweaks to characters from Combat Pack 2, normalizing what they could do in-game. I think that MK11's big final 
final patch and send off was making custom variations viable, something that the game was marketed as. So by the end of the game's lifespan, it does technically live up to what they originally had envisioned. So I do not see the support here being too too high. On top of this, if they were to make a DLC pack, how much of a priority does it take over let's say a new project? Because Neverrealm is a very small team, and working on three characters may in fact take away attention from a new game. What that could be? Well, we'll talk about that in a bit. If we're talking about possible story DLC, I mean, where exactly do we really go from here in terms of DLC pack, right? Because we can't really follow Liu Kang's ending, which seems like the definitive ending, because it is a reboot of the franchise, allowing new characters to flourish. So we can't really add new characters to a game via DLC if they are important to the story. It's very, very ambitious, and I don't think fans would be entirely happy getting a DLC pack of four characters that are completely new, because they are unfamiliar faces, taking priority over old school characters, which tends to rub fans the wrong way. If we were to follow Shang Tsung's ending, where exactly do we go from here? Because of the premise that Shang Tsung's ending does leave, seems like a really big cliffhanger if we're only going to have a few characters finish off that plot thread. I'm not sure if DLC is the correct way to wrap up that entire story, especially with how high the stakes are. So overall, as of right now, I definitely think we are at the end of Eleven's lifespan. And that's honestly not a bad thing at all. MK11's had a very good run. I mean, three DLC packs, a story expansion that many of us had been asking for, we were able to get Kerry Tagawa back as Shang Tsung. These are all really good things that should be praised. The only real downside to this is that we have to wait a really long time for another MK installment. So I can 110% understand why many people wouldn't want support to end for this game, because it is quite a break in between installments. Now, if the MK11 section done, let's go on to our next one and talk about the pretty obvious option on the table, Injustice 3. Now, I believe that out of all the choices I do have here, that this is the safe pick. As we all do know, when Warner bought the Midway team and branded them as NRS, there was a two-year annual cycle where for the first two years they'd make a Mortal Kombat game, followed by a DC fighting game, that being Injustice, followed by another Mortal Kombat game and another Injustice game. We are currently in the cycle where we're up to a Mortal combat game, so it would only be natural to expect another DC fighter. But what do I think are the chances of this happening? Honestly, out of all of the options I do have here, I think that this is at the very top of the list. So it was only natural for me to assume that this is what was coming next. Now, do I think it's in NRS's best interest to actually put out Injustice 3? Well, Yes, yes it is, 110%. They already have a strong foundation to build upon, because unlike Mortal Kombat, that continues to somewhat reinvent the wheel. Injustice is more of a legacy-based game, meaning that there is a ground that can already be built upon as the foundation is laid out. So it won't be quite as difficult from a developmental standpoint than let's say Mortal Kombat. Plus, what really benefits from now is the era of media that we are kind of in. Of course, in the last two decades or so, superhero movies have really boomed, whilst that has predominantly been on Marvel's end. It's not like the DCEU has been very far behind. Whilst yes, it has had a rocky start, and been rather controversial for a long amount of time, things started to go at a bit more of a steady pace. So on a media front, superheroes simply sell, and it really works from a marketing standpoint. And I think now is probably the best time to capitalise on the hype, because Marvel is still somewhat post-Infinity War, and laying out the foundation for the next generation and phase of films. Whilst DC at the moment does have its own established universe, but is on uneasy ground. Because of course, as of making this video, the Schneider Cut has just come out. Meaning that there's technically two versions of the Justice League out there, and there is a Flashpoint movie that's scheduled in the pipeline that is designed to reset the universe. There was a Joker spin-off movie, there is another Batman spin-off movie. The DC universe is kind of a little bit all over the place, but that's not to say it's actually a bad thing, as it allows for more creative minds to tackle the license. The only real big issue here is continuity, but of the Flashpoint point movie, it's going to allow DC to push their brand forward and allow it to contest and have healthy competition with Marvel films. So Injustice would really benefit from that hype and the positive competitive marketing between both sides. So I think that the best time for another Injustice game is honestly
honestly as soon as possible. There will always be a market for comic book superhero movies, but right now is a very important point for the comic book movie industry, and it is absolutely something I would love to see. Plus, with Neverrealm now doing face scans and body scans of actual actors, we could get a incredibly beautiful game. Plus, on top of this, the Injustice universe was given more material during last year, where there was an Injustice Year Zero comic book series taking place before the events of the first game, and explored the relationship and passing of the torch from the Justice Society of America to the Justice League. The passing of the torch eerily does resemble Batman's ending, where he was forming a new Justice League with Supergirl at his side. Now it is worth mentioning here that both endings for Injustice 2 could actually lead to a game, but the more than likely one is actually the Batman ending, because for those of you who don't know, the Superman ending was in fact expanded on in a comic book crossover series known as Injustice vs Masters of the Universe. It's actually a pretty good comic book series and I highly do recommend all of you read it. So with the Superman ending explored, it seems like the likelihood of the Batman one coming to fruition is pretty up there right now. And like I said, the demand for superhero content right now is very very high. So I honestly think that the next game that NRS is going to put out is going to be Injustice 3. It's the safe pick, it's the smart pick from a marketing standpoint, it's a legacy game so the foundation is still there, and there is an audience for it right now. There is no better time to capitalize on it. But now with that being said, what are the other ideas I had on the table? Well one that the NRS fanbase have actually asked for a fair bit is a horror fighting game featuring the horror characters that we have seen in their games. So kind of like a high budget terror dome. Now honestly, I actually really like this idea. I would love to see all the icons from horror movies go head to head against each other in a fight to the death. That stuff's really cool. One of my favourite aspects of Mortal Kombat X is that we had an alien vs predator fighting game. That's super cool. But in saying that, it's easier to practically say this on paper than it is actually to get sorted out. Now the reason why this is such a mixed bag of ideas is because a horror guest fighting game like this is very dependent on licensing. You see the studio has to go out and acquire the licenses of different characters in order to incorporate them into their game. And this will actually vary depending on what film that character's from and which version is incorporated into the game. Prices on each of these licenses could vary too because of that. There are in fact two instances of this in Neverrealm history where this idea has gone horribly wrong. The first was in Mortal Kombat 9 with Freddy Krueger and most recently with Ash Williams. Now the fiasco with Kruger was that the licensing and that iteration of the character fell back into the hands of Craven Estate, meaning that not only had the licensing expired, but they had lost the licensing to profit off the use of his image. So that's why Mortal Kombat 9 got pulled from Steam. For Mortal Kombat 11, for whatever reason, because the details aren't entirely disclosed, the Ash Williams deal fell apart, which has even been acknowledged by Boone, meaning that they couldn't actually use use the character in game, which is why if we look into the data mines of the game and look at the contents of the first combat pack, Ash is actually in the file. He simply cannot be used because the deal fell through and he didn't have the license to use that character. The reason why is probably due to the fact that Ash is getting his own game this year, but it just gives you an idea of how licensing is handled. There's a lot of stuff that goes on with it, and even I myself don't entirely know the ins and outs of it. Now to make an entire fighting game that is dependent on each character from each studio and making sure that the licensing doesn't run out or something doesn't go horribly wrong is a very, very risky thing to do. Neverrun would honestly be better off making its own horror fighting game series, something that isn't shackled by licensing. But in also saying that, would fans be interested in a new IP with characters they are not familiar with and characters who are simply homages to much larger than life characters? I don't know. I honestly don't have an answer for that. But that's my honest opinion and thoughts on a horror fighting game. It would be super duper cool, but there's so much of it that rides on licensing. And let's say five years after the game comes out, and there's another Craven House incident and the game has to get pulled, what happens then, right? So honestly, I don't see the likelihood of a horror fighting game really happening, and if it was, it'd probably be in Warner's best interest to just have it be a completely original IP. So with this idea done, what's the next one? Well, Ed has actually talked about this 
very briefly, but a Marvel fighting game, possibly a Marvel vs DC fighting game. Now this largely does go back to what I had mentioned about Injustice 3 and the hype surrounding comic book movies. I think it actually would be in both the interest of Warner and Marvel to have this happen, but I think because of the competitive market between both sides, I don't see it happening. Do I think it would be amazing if it did? Without a doubt. I would love to see a Nevero Marvel game. That's something I could only simply dream of. But could I really see these studios put aside their competitive nature for this one game? Chances aren't particularly too high. But I will say that right now, I do think on the game front, it would actually favour Marvel a little bit more. And that's mostly due to the fact that DC games tend to actually be pretty good these days. The Arkham games have proven that, and even the Injustice games have. Plus, DC as of right now has their Suicide Squad game on the horizon, as well as Gotham Knights. Right now on the Marvel front, we have two really good Spider-Man games and Square Enix's Avengers game. I think everyone has pretty much said everything that can be said about that game, but it ain't looking too great. And even before that, we got Marvel vs Capcom Infinite. It, it doesn't look great. It doesn't look great. I think it would benefit Marvel on a gaming front if they were able to make a deal here. It would be a big win for comic book fans and would help put Marvel back in the fighting game scene because it has been a very, very long time. But that's everything I do have to say about the Marvel end of the spectrum. Now, my final idea, and I've purposely left this for the very last one, is possibly a MK vs DC game. Again, yeah, I know. Now, the reason why I've left this to the very last is because people still have not forgotten this game. And this is a game that is shunned by both its dev team and community. But it has been a very, very long time since then. So I like to think that a lot of the bad taste has been washed out. Plus, in between that time, Neverrealm has put out five different games that are drastically, drastically better than what this game was. So is it worth Neverrealm having another shot at this? And do I think it's possible? Yeah, I, I actually think this is very, very possible. Now, the main reasons as to why is because one, it has already happened before. And due to MK11's story, having opened up the more multiverse with different timelines. MK vs DC is technically canon, even if it doesn't exist in the main continuity. Two, the Injustice Foundation does exist, and remember it's something they can build upon. Three, the Mortal Kombat universe has crossed over into the Injustice universe, of course that being via DLC. And four, Mortal Kombat has stepped back a bit, and isn't quite as explosive as its ex-counterpart. Meaning that the middle ground between an Injustice and a Mortal Kombat game isn't too far outside the realm of possibility. The real question is whether or not it will be successful due to the negative reception of the first game. And honestly, I think it actually would be successful. Not only does it take the popularity from comic book movies, but it mixes in that rated R aspect of Mortal Kombat, something that DC movies have been integrating over the last few years. So a mix between these two different series definitely does go hand in hand with each other, especially with how DC have been putting an R rating on their films, and the Injustice universe itself is actually pretty damn violent. Whilst it may lack the blood in the main games, that comic book series is pretty rough. So the question is right now, do I think this is possible? Yes, I 110% think it's possible. Do I think it's the best choice out of everything I've put on the table? No. If I were to somewhat rank each of these, from realistic to unrealistic, I'd say it's Injustice 3 at the top, Combat Pack 3 slash DLC, a Mortal Kombat vs Injustice game, a Marvel vs DC game, and finally a horror fighting game. As I said at the very start of this video, there's a lot of variables and ideas on the table. It's ultimately up to Warner and NRS to decide where do they bat the ball. So with this being said, that's actually been it for this video. I do hope you have enjoyed this, as I feel like I've given each of these a fair amount of time, and I do like all of these ideas here. I just like to be realistic with the choices I have on the table, and I wanted to explain to you all what one do I think will happen and why. There's a lot of outside factors that do influence these games here and there are some who are still new to the franchise. So I hope you all do come away learning a little bit more by doing so. Now with that said, with the options that I do have on the table, please down in the comments below let me know what would you like to see? Because if I were to pick one and I don't think it will happen, but as a comic book fan, I would love a Marvel vs DC fighting game. That is something I would love to see. 
So again, please let me know your thoughts down in the comments below. But before this video does wrap up guys, if possible, let's try getting it to about 500 likes. And please do not forget to tick that bell as it is an incredible way of supporting this channel. Also heads up, I do have a history of trauma episode coming out later this week. So please do keep an eye out for that. But for now guys, as always, please comment, like, subscribe and share this video with everyone you know. Please take care and I will see you all next time.